Hi there. Let's talk about writing in GPT-3 where we look out for patterns because, well, it's one of the things that GPT-3 is really good at, is picking up on patterns. Straight away, I apologize if I sound a little stuffy. It's allergy season here in Tokyo and uh, trying to sort of recover from that. Um, so GPT-3's specialty, I mean, it's a unidirectional predictive text algorithm, which basically means it's really good at picking up on patterns and filling in missing words or finishing sentences, sort of continuing or predicting the next text uh, that would s follow uh, a certain passage. So when you're using something like shortly, um, you just need to be really aware of this because you might find yourself in a situation where you're trying to write and you're, you're kind of getting back some output that isn't exactly what you want. And it almost could sometimes feel like you're trapped and the AI keeps producing something a certain way and it's not what you want. And so then you might get frustrated. I want to explain probably or one of the things that could be happening to you and that's patterns. Um, so first, what is a pattern? Uh, well, I mean, it's probably what you think it is. It's just a, a pattern is a sequence that kind of repeats itself. And sometimes those patterns, they show up in our speech, in our, in our language and how we write and stuff. They show up all the time, but they're kind of not necessarily known to us. They might not stand out at first glance. Now, usually when you're writing, it's a little bit easier because you'll you'll see things like line breaks or dashes or numbers and sometimes asterisks or whatever, whatever it is that kind of makes up. Like if you look at your text and you can kind of visually see a pattern, there's a good chance that uh, the AI is going to start following that pattern because it thinks that's what you want. It's predicting based off of the past. So, and um, I mentioned a double hashtag here because that's one of the things I like to do in a previous video, I mentioned that you can use Markdown in your shortly writing so that you can, when, when you are done, you can take it over and paste it into WordPress and, and the Gutenberg editor in WordPress will accept it and just automatically turn it into headings and things like that. It's really nice when you're trying to publish and get things done quickly. So the AI will pick up on these patterns and sometimes it's good, sometimes it's annoying. So in particular, you want to be ready for lists um, because basically once you start down the list of or start down the path of creating a list, that's probably going to be what the AI is going to follow with very consistently. Um, especially things like numbered lists. Like if you start typing one dot and then you make like a, a first bullet and then two dot next bullet, and then you hit three dot and hit, you know, right for me and shortly, chances are it's going to finish off number three, maybe even start number four and number five, and just keep following that pattern. Um, so obviously this is good if you want to make a list. In a lot of cases you do, and so you need to be aware of this, this capability because if you really want to create a longer list, then you keep following the numbers or following the dashes, just keep leading the AI. And I'll, I'll show this here in a little bit, but if you feel trapped in that, pa in that uh, pattern, and you want to break out of that list, uh, shortly introduced a context cutoff ruler. It's a triple slash. And basically that just stops the, the uh, AI from using the content above the triple slash. And I went over this in a lot more detail in a previous video. I'll link to that as well. But suffice it to say that if you need to break out of that pattern, you're going to want to know how to use the triple slash command in shortly. So we call this context in shortly. Um, context basically being the content that is sent over to GPT-3 when you click the button to try and get some text back. Uh, so in uh, actual GPT-3 API terms, that's called a prompt. So you might hear other tools call this a prompt. I like to say context because I feel like it makes more sense to you as a, as a human being sitting at a keyboard, you know, context is the the words and stuff that are around where you're writing that gets sent over to the to the AI for 
um, prompting it, I guess. And so make sure you check out the video where I discuss the context in Short Lake because it'll, it goes into this in a lot more detail. So back to this patterns thing, um, it is a little bit something that's somewhat unique to shortly, not always. Um, but in shortly, you know, you, you've got the blank canvas. So you just have this document that you open, you start writing and you can do pretty much whatever you want. Cause it's, it's a blank canvas for you to write. And then when you need some assistance to add more content or to give you new ideas or for the AI assistant to sort of finish your thoughts while you write, you just click the write for me button or use some of the slash commands that are in the, in the tool to write quickly and to enhance your content and to augment your, your, your workflow. Other tools are more forms based. So you kind of, you know, it's already sort of trying to weed out the possibility of even having a pattern because all you're doing is filling in forms and then hitting, you know, submit and you get your content. You got to take that content and copy and paste it somewhere for you, for you to use it. And um, so you probably won't run into the list problem or the patterns problem as often in other tools like niches or uh, conversion AI or copy AI and stuff like that. Although sometimes you can. So just be aware that when you feel like the AI is returning something that doesn't quite fit what you really, really want, pay attention in your writing or in your prompting, whatever it is that you're sending over to the AI, see if maybe you have a pattern or something like that to think about. Okay, let's go into shortly here. And I've already started a, a document to kind of showcase this a little bit. It's about the top ramen shops in Tokyo. Now, in shortly, you want to create a good topic rich uh, article brief, which will give you uh, a good chance or a better chance or improve your chances, I should say, of getting back good quality content from the AI. And if you follow along in a previous video, I talk about using phrase to do this, where you basically would write the article brief in phrase and try and use the topic score for the search term, which in this case is top ramen shops in Tokyo. You find that the topic scores, you can use uh, long tail, topic clusters, whatever you want to try and find some keywords that you'll end up using in here. And so the ones that are kind of bolded in red or, or colored in red are, are sort of the ones that I've used. They're red because in phrase, they're trying to show you an algorithm where there's obviously not enough content here and it would be like keyword stuffing. So it says, see, it says my article is too short. Keep writing to ensure you're, you have the right topic density. I'm not trying to write the article here. So what I'm just trying to do is get an article brief out of this. So I'm just using some of the keywords and picking and choosing some to make a nice uh, topic rich uh, article brief that I can use in shortly here to help me write this. So I started out this document with ramen is one of the best foods you'll find in Tokyo. I stopped there and I let the article, the um, AI write this. And then I wrote a number one space and I let the AI write this. So now you can tell that I'm stuck in a pattern. There's, there's a good chance that if I write, or if I click write for me right now, let me just roll this up here, that it's probably going to start with a number four and, you know, find something that's a number four and it'll probably do a five, maybe even a six. Let's just see what happens. It's not always true, but there's a good chance. Yeah. See, and there it goes. So, as you can see, I've got now a top 10 list, basically, of top ramen shops, which, of course, this is AI. Uh, I'm probably going to do another video on this in the future where anything that the AI produces for you, you should kind of be reviewing it to make sure that it's true, factual, not plagiarized. And it's also kind of molded to your voice. You don't want to just take the AI content 100% as is. I mean, in some cases, a little bit, you know, in some, in some cases, depending on your topic, depending on how you like to write, how well you've prompted it, you know, you're probably going to find some kind of a ratio where it's like maybe 60% AI, 40% you, you know, um, or the other way around, just depending on the topic and things like that. I mean, you might have some topics where the AI just doesn't really know enough about it. And the content it produces is just not something you can use. And so 
it just happens. And, uh, you know, th these tools, the, the GPT-3, the AI is a tool to augment your capabilities. And so I just wanted to show you what it looks like when you get trapped in a pattern. And let's see if, um, if I can figure out a way of getting out of that pattern. Cause see if I, let's just say if I, if I try and get down here, I'm, I'm assuming I'm, I'm kind of in a section where I'm, I feel like, okay, I want to start writing something new now. Maybe let's see if it takes a pattern still. It's probably going to prove me wrong here. Yeah. Okay. And you see that it still kind of has a pattern going and, uh, looks like it's, uh, now it's going to try and get through, go through some reviews. So I don't, I don't want this. I want to write something else. Let's use the triple slash and start to lead the AI. Let's say that, um, hmm. let's just say like many ramen shops in Tokyo uh, provide. And let's just see what the AI will return for us. And there we go. You can see that it's kind of taking a hint from the article brief because, you know, I mentioned things like pork bone and miso and stuff like that. But that's actually what you want when when you just really quick, because if you watch, you, you got to go watch the context video because it describes this in a lot more detail. But what happens is when I I say I, pro, I, I wrote all the way to many of the round shops in Tokyo provide and then hit, you know, go. It's going to take this. It's going to stop here because the context cut off right there. Right. It's going to take this. It's going to take all of this and the title and send it over to the AI. And that's going to go all the way over there, come back, give me this content, and then I can take this and do things with it. So um, maybe, let's, uh, this might be a little bit long, but let's just say that maybe that this is a little bit too long and I want to reduce it, shorten it down a little bit. <laughs> and there we go. Um, and then maybe, so you can probably do like, and then let the AI write some more. I'm just kind of trying to show you some of the dance that you can do. Oh, and that's perfect right there. Excellent. And uh, look, it's giving us some more content. I also want to kind of mention this to you. Like maybe this content isn't exactly what you want for your article, but it's not terrible content. In this case, I, I feel like maybe it does kind of work anyways, but let's assume that this paragraph was kind of like tangent. It was, it was a tangent to your to your main content and you don't really want to water down your article with something that it's somewhat related, but it's not exactly, then don't necessarily have to throw this away. It could be an idea for a future article or it could be something you could cut, you can cut out of here, paste into like a, um, what do you, what do you call it? Just, just in some notes or something and in like a pull list or something that you can use later in another article, maybe even just make this sort of an intro paragraph or something to it. Just sometimes, even when the content isn't exactly what you want for your article, it's still useful in some way. So don't automatically throw things away uh, just because it doesn't fit. Just that's just a tip for uh, you know becoming more productive with these AI tools. So that's um, that's the context. That's looking out for patterns. You need to be careful when you're in a pattern. If you want it, perfect. Keep keep going with it. You know, like if I wanted to try and make eleven, I could start there and hit go. And it'll probably make 11 and 12, 13, maybe even. And you just kind of roll with that. And, and look, you see, and sometimes you get where it repeats and things like that. You just got to be careful, review it, you know. But as far as being productive, that's this is pretty darn fast for being able to create lists of content this quickly. So definitely check it out. And um, I hope you find that this is helpful. And... Beware of the patterns. If there's anything else I can help you with, make a note in the in the in the or write a comment below. Or if you're viewing this online and you're a part of the mailing list, just reply to one of my emails, and I'll see what I can do to make something in the future to make this better or easier to understand, and make you know tools like this fit into your workflows better. And until next time, take care.